Not many people know this, but I used to draw and paint my whole life and I even sold my artworks. And just recently I thought to myself, was my art used to train generative AI models? And the answer is, yes it was. I wanted to understand how these models are trained and why no artist succeeded in suing companies like OpenAI, Stable Diffusion or Midjourney. In this video I also will share with you my personal take on the future of human-made art and I will show you how I trained my own AI model on my painting style. But first of all, let's look at this lawsuit. Sarah Anderson, which I think you've probably seen her cartoons, together with Kelly McKerna and Carla Ortiz are suing Stability AI, Midjourney, and DeviantArt in class action complaint for copyright infringement alongside other violations. And the main statement of this lawsuit is this. AI image generators at 21st century collage tools that violate the rights of millions of artists. Interesting. However, AI companies asked the court to dismiss the artist's proposed class action lawsuit, arguing that the AI created images are not similar to the artist's work and that the law also did not note specific images that are allegedly misused. And the stability's filing said that artists failed to identify a single allegedly infringing output image, let alone one that is substantially similar to any of their copyrighted works. Here's the thing, artists will never be able to provide that because AI-generated images are never 100% replica of the original one. And I will link this law case in the description box below so you can check it out but it has a very interesting section, how stable diffusion works, 21st century collage tool, and it breaks down step by step how stable diffusion works, but also in general how diffusion models work. Diffusion is a technique which goes all the way back to 2015, and diffusion operates in two ways. First, you take an image and you apply noise. If you ever photoshopped, uh, you would probably know what I'm talking about, till it completely breaks down the image. But then there is another way where you take that noise and you reconstruct an image. And this is when you engage with AI art. It is diffusion model which is reconstructing an image based on your prompt. And it also provides this example from the research paper where you have two original images. The prior way for merging images like a typical collage would do pixel space interpolation where you just overlay two images. But what diffusion model does, it denoises the interpolation so you get a new image, which is something in between the two, but not exactly as the two. And in 2022, the diffusion technique was improved by Robin Rombach, who was employed by Stability AI. And Stability AI is the guys and girls behind stable diffusion. And this is called conditioning. So this is not just an image, but he added extra information as a text. And after this, their conclusion is this. The resulting image is necessary a derivative work because it is generated exclusively from a combination of a conditioning data and the latent image. Here is a catch. What you get from the copy is something created from the latent image, this denoised system image. And latent image is a copy of copyrighted image. So you never really get the copyrighted image. And when it comes to the training data, unfortunately, most people don't read terms and conditions. My name, it's my career, it's me. They're, they're using me. So, and you assign them the right to exploit all of that. What? When? Terms and conditions. I have never seen this before. Let's talk about the source of a training data and it's called Lion. Large scale artificial intelligence open network. And funny enough, it is located in Hamburg, Germany. So this organization is non-profit, 100% free, and they aggregate data sets. And one of those data sets was Lion 400M, which Stability, DeviantArt, Midjourney used in their models. This data set was prepared and combined based on common crawl data. This is the common crawl, which is also completely accessible to everybody. It's a company which scrapes the internet and provides that information to anybody, for researchers, for anybody to access. You yourself can even go now and download these data sets. So now I want you to imagine that this common crawl was crawling DeviantArt, was crawling any visual or textual platform. And to put a chair on top, if you go to the DeviantArt's terms and conditions, 
Section 15, Submitting Content, you will find Submission Policy. If you click this one and you scroll all the way down to License to Use Art artistic materials to prepare and encode artist materials, but also to display, copy, reproduce, exhibit, publicly perform, broadcast, and so on under the seats to modify, adapt, change, or other ways alter. You give also the right to sublicense to any other person or company, and they have even under terms and conditions, data scraping and machine learning activity section. We've been uploading all type of content to the internet and on internet, nothing is free. I guess the conclusion is that just comes to backfire everybody. Writers, artists, musicians, regardless how all of this pans out and what is going to be the outcome of all these lawsuits, genie is out of the box. I don't think that AI art or generative AI image softwares are going anywhere. And even as it gains even more popularity, AI art is not going to replace human-made art that we know and love. In fact, it may make pre-AI art even more desirable for art collectors, which is pretty incredible considering that some art pieces are already worth hundreds of millions of dollars. These paintings are even used as a store of wealth or even as a form of investment. And the interesting fact is that luxury art already passed its pre-pandemic levels this year. And in that market, there is a lot of opportunity to combine art and technology. For example, Masterworks, who is kindly sponsoring this video, allows you to invest in legendary man or woman made art directly from your phone. I always wanted to invest in art, and now I did, without spending millions of dollars in an auction. And Masterworks currently has more than a 700 million in assets under management. When you look at their track record, it's easy to see why. Masterworks have sold 45 million worth of art and distributed proceeds to investors like you and I. Masterworks has a waiting list and you are being vetted by a specialist so you have a call before you can invest and the specialist will help you analyze your situation and your potential into investing in this asset class and demand is still growing and those of you who subscribe to my channel are interested in alternative investment forms and want to support artists, you can click the link in the description box below and skip the line and get started. My position is somewhere in the middle and I truly hope that all these lawsuits and concerns about copyright will be solved and artists will be compensated at least in some royalties. On the other side, I understand how all this happened and I think it's incredible breakthrough in technology that we are experiencing right now. And to illustrate this, the best analogy I found how these generative AI artworks are being created is art made and exhibited at the Museum of Modern Art. It is trying to dream and speculate an imagination of a machine. So unsupervised learning means that actually you're letting the machine learning model do that tagging based on its own sort of Who knows? black box. Yeah, it's a, <laughs> actually it's a, a lot of it is a black box. Like we don't actually know what's going on in there. The machine learning model has built an incredibly complex classification system or map of MoMA's collection. It has decided it's going to group a number of data points over here and a number of data points over here. And you create a kind of galaxy. But in that galaxy, there's a lot of empty space. So then the machine learning model in concert with Rafiq's team is sort of navigating through that empty space and saying, nothing exists here. But what could exist? And that is where the kind of speculative and hypothetical and even what we might call a kind of dreaming starts to take place. I want to show you how I trained my own AI model based on my paintings. So this is my DeviantArt page, which I used to post paintings here when I was 18, I think. So let's check if any of his paintings is in a data set. And this is the website where you can check if your paintings or your art or your images have been used in a data set of Lion. And we are going to upload this image. Here you go. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, let's try another one. Ah, huh, this one is not. Interesting. Okay, and how about this one is also not, but I just saw my another painting. Another place which is a little bit easier. Have I been trained.com? How about childish? <laughs> okay, so 
Childish has 91% match, but I just spotted my painting by Hi Cherry. Okay, so I will just upload this one and let's see what's the match. 94% match. Crazy. Let's do a fusion once again. 93% match. Okay, but I'm not seeing it pop here. But these paintings are beautiful. To my beautiful. I think it's it's gorgeous. Oh, I found it. Okay, here you go. This website, Stable Diffusion Art, has a lot of different tutorials. For the purpose of replicating my painting style, I used this tutorial. In this tutorial, you will need to use Google Collab, which is a platform provided by Google, which allows you to use their computing power and RAM space to run these models. So I will link the tutorial down below. So I used this method to train my own custom style model and I took it one step forward and I installed automatic 111 stable diffusion web UI and this thing is really fun because it allows you so much control over your model but I want to show you how it looks and what results I got so from first tutorial in Google Collab you will have a file for the model you trained and then you can use that file to upload it into automatic and there is a lot of different intricate steps but these tutorials cover it very very clearly and i took one step further to design the prompts to replicate my style i used prompt perfect and you can choose from different models and i chose stable diffusion then you can upload your image and it will optimize your prompt for that model so for example when i uploaded my favorite painting I got this prompt and that gave me an inspiration to take out some words or phrases or even sentences and start building my own prompt for my own painting style. And this is the results. AI art in style by Gotta Go.